Assalamu alaikum students, welcome back to English class. Open your books to page number 31. In the last class, we stopped our work at the third exercise in Learn Grammar. So today we are, we are starting with Learn to use the dictionary. This is basically Learn to spell. Read the passage. Some words are not spelled correctly. Check the spellings in the dictionary and cross out the incorrect words. One has been done for you. So you can look at the example here. Let's start reading. Soon after the last bell, Danielle and Danny hurried slash hurried home to speak to their parents about a new club. So you can see the two words given to us are hurried or hurried. So there's two R's in the first hurried and in the second hurry, there's only one R. Which one is the correct spelling students? Yes, the one with the two R's. Hurried has two R's. Good job. So you will cross out the wrong one. Now let's move on. We think it's a great day, they said, to have a club that goes around helping children. It could also build up school spirit. There are no words given here, so move on. The children's parents cancelled slash cancelled their own plans for Saturday afternoon. So here you can see we do have a choice given. One is cancelled with an S, C-A-N-S-E-L-L-E-D. The other one is C-A-N-C-E-L-L-E-D, the one with C. So which one is correct, students? Yes, cancelled has a C, not an S. So you will cross out which one? Yes, the one with S. You will cross it out, make a line through it. And took the children to the park for a lovely picnic. Later, they headed for some ice cream sundaes, full stop. Now let's go to the next paragraph. When they returned home, the children thought quietly slash quietly about their dreams and plans. So we are given two words. One is quietly with E before the T and the other quietly has E after T. So here you can notice that quiet in this sentence means that they were silently thinking about their dreams. However, the second quiet is about small, a quantity. So the one we want is the first one, which means silently. So you will cross out the second quietly. Now let's move on. The next day, they left early to share their ideas with their teacher. Mrs. White was quiet slash quiet excited. So again, we are given the words quiet and they both have the same meanings as before, right? However, here it's used in a different way. Before it was used in a manner, in a silent manner. Here it means a little bit, right? Mrs. White was a little excited. It's not about silently excited, of course. So how do we spell the quiet that means a little bit? Yes, we spell it Q-U-I-T-E. Good job. You can see that they sound the same, but they have different spellings, all right? Would you allow the whole class to join the friendship club, she asked. Mrs. White promised them time during class to discuss plans. She even volunteered slash volunteered to be the secretary. So here, which is the correct spelling for volunteered? One is with I and the other is with U. Yes, of course, volunteered has a U, not an I. So you will cross out the first one and the second one is your correct word. Now let's go on to the next page. As a class, the decided members of the friendship club had to follow three rules. A. Be polite to each other. B. Do not gossip slash gossip about anyone. C. Help cheer up sad students. So here we have to choose between gossip. Does gossip have two S or one S and two P's? Yes, of course, it has two S and one P. So you will take the correct one, the first one, and you will cross out the second gossip. So now let's move on to number two. Look at the entry for holiday as given in a dictionary. So here we have a small box. Let's read it. Holiday, noun, number one, British American vacation. A time when you do not go to work or school and often go and stay away from home. The school holidays start next week. We're going to the coast for our summer holiday. Mrs. Smith isn't here this week. She's on holiday. Number two, a day when most people do not go to work or school, especially because of a religious or national celebration. Next Monday is a holiday. Then we have a small box called culture in which they're telling us a different word. So a day when everybody has a holiday is called a public holiday in Britain and in US. In Britain, it is also called a bank holiday. 
Now let's look at the passage given here. The words summer holiday and on holiday are printed in darker letters. You can see that in the dictionary, they've been used with the word holiday, right? Summer holiday, on holiday. So basically what they're saying is, which means that the words summer and on often go together with holiday. These words go together usually. So summer holiday, on holiday. These are common phrases, which is why they are in bold. So now let's go to the exercise. Look up these words in the dictionary, find words that go together with them and write them in the words in the blanks below. The first one has been done for you. Part A, arrive verb. So what they have written is arrive at, a station, an airport, a school, arrive in, town or country. What they've done is they've added the word that is most likely boldened. So for example, in the dictionary, when they looked up the word arrive, they found that words arrive at and arrive in are common phrases and they've given examples in the brackets. So we'll do the same thing. So now for part B, look for the word curious in your dictionary and write it in the same way. Common phrases used. Now with just a simple Google search, what have I found? That the common phrase with curious is about, curious about something. That is the popular phrase. So now in the same way, you can do it for the rest of the words. Open your dictionaries and find the words. And then there must be a sentence given in that you can see the common phrases used. So here are all the answers for learn to use a dictionary, including number one and number two. So for example, let's look at part C. The correct answers are good idea, got an idea, or idea of. Any of these can be correct, or you can write more than one as well. Part D, this morning, tomorrow morning, all morning, in the morning, on Monday morning. Okay, then part E, keep a record of, holds the record of, in record time, break the record. So you can see that all these words are used in a different way, in a different context, but they are common and they were in the dictionary. All right, now back to page number 32, learn to write. Have you ever done something good for someone or helped someone without wanting anything in return? Has anyone ever done the same for you? These are random acts of kindness. In 1995, 17th February became random acts of kindness day. Of course, we can perform such acts all through the year. Next page. Write a short paragraph on something that you did for someone or something that someone did for you. Look at the chart below. It may help you to build an account of the experience. So now they've given us a table which will help us write the short paragraph that we have to write. So in this, we have four things we can talk about. Setting, where and when did the act take place? Characters, who were the people in the story? Problem, what was the problem or the need? Solution, how was the problem solved? So as you know, we have to write about something that you did for someone or something that someone did for you. Any random act of kindness. Of course, if they're being kind to you, there must be a reason for the kindness. Okay, you will talk about the people, the action, and why they did the action. So what was the problem and how they solved the problem, and then the place and the time. Th those are common things that you write in a short story, right? So now let's read the example they have given us. I will always remember what Ibrahim and Abdullah did for me last summer. My mother had bought a bicycle for me, but she did not have the time to teach me to ride it. I needed someone to take me out in the neighborhood and help me learn. I told my friends about it and they came over immediately. They helped me take my brand new bike out into the open. They helped me get on the bike and taught me how to ride it. They also encouraged me by telling me that I was doing fine when I really wasn't. They picked me up when I fell down. They were wonderful. I can now write because of them. So students, now let's dissect this short paragraph, this example paragraph. So what is the setting? So what is the setting, students? Yes, for when they have written last summer, right? And for the place where they have written out in the neighborhood. So this way, setting has been answered. Now for characters, who were the people in the story? Yes, first person is I, the person who is writing the story. Then we have Ibrahim and Abdullah who helped him and the mother who gifted it to him. But the main people are Ibrahim and Abdullah who the story is about. 
Then the problem, what was the problem or the need for these friends? Yes, the problem was that the narrator did not know how to ride a bicycle. Right, and what was the solution? Yes, that they took him outside, they helped him got, get onto it, and they taught him how to ride it. They encouraged the person by telling them they were, being, they were doing fine, even though they weren't. They picked them up when they fell down, and they were wonderful, and now they can ride because of their friends. So this is how you will write the short paragraph, write it in your notebooks, and make sure to answer these questions and talk about any kindness. You could have done it, or someone could have done it for you. Once you're done with these exercises, let's come to this one, learn to speak. Work in groups of four. You, you can do this with your parents or your family members, your siblings, or even with your friends. Think of any room in your house. Do not tell anyone which room it is. Take turns to describe the room and the objects placed in it. The others will try to guess the name of the room you are describing. So if you're doing this at home with your family, this would be very easy to do, right? All you have to do is think of a room so you don't tell them which one it is you will describe it right you will use adjectives to describe the room the colors the objects anything you can describe and they will guess it so for example you will say there is a large table in it there are several chairs around the table it has a cupboard with some plates and dishes and the rest are guessing is it a dining room so this is your last activity it is also a lot of fun so we are ending on page number 33. Make sure to do all of your work, students. Do it in your notebook and neatly. See you next time, students. Allah Hafiz.